Righto, so this week, straightening the bumper bar that come off the rear, so a bit of filing, hammering, getting it ready to take some filler. Got some parts in the booth as well in epoxy, so some smalls, racks, you know, brackets, those types of things. And I go a fair bit of length about how to set up your air for your, for your booth or if you're spraying from home, um, how you might set up there. And other bits and pieces, a little bit of trim. And don't forget, subscribe. That helps us to keep moving forward with the channel. And if you make a comment, I'll make sure I get back to you and make a genuine comment back and have a chat to you. So welcome along. Thanks for joining and uh, enjoy the show. Righto, so we're back in the booth again. So I've got all these bits hanging up, um, ready to be cleaned and sorted out. But before I do that, I thought I'd just run through with you some information about the air and the way I've got my air set up and what I think you should have um, with your home or at work in relation to air quality. So let's go out and start where the compressor is and work our way back into the booth. Righto, so we've just ducked in around the back. So this is sort of tucked out of the way. Um, compressors, this one's a three phase. I mean, you can use three phase or single. I'm lucky I've got three phase, so we can utilize that. Just need something with plenty of storage and, and plenty of capacity. And I was fortunate enough probably five or six years ago to put this one in. So I've got it set up whereby the air for the whole shed works off one valve and then I've got a T-piece that I can then run the booth off. So when I'm not painting, I can just run the main workshop. And then I run lines from there around and I've got a secondary tank to give me more storage. And that's the tank off my old compressor and I've hung it on the wall. And what we do there is run from here. So we drain this weekly and then it runs around, goes through a um, for refrigerated um, air system, so it freezes the air and takes the moisture out of the air, then goes up into this tank, into the top of the tank, and then we then have a, another air ability to, to bleed off the bottom of that tank, and then it runs around to the booth. So that's a refrigerated unit, so it freezes the air, and then that takes the moisture out of it, and then it goes up into the secondary tank above, and that's just my old tank with a coat of, coat of blue paint on it. And so I come in into the top, enables me to bleed off the bottom, and then the line comes from the top of it and around. And the whole time we're just trying to keep the moisture out. So the airline goes in steps and works its way up higher and higher. And the idea again is to minimise the water. Once it gets to the top, drops down, goes into the booth. And then I've got this one set up so it's running on full pressure and that lets me run from there around the, the sandblaster so that we've got um, dry air for the sandblaster. Righto, so once the air gets from the outside, comes through the wall here, obviously, and then I've got this SATA set up. So you can't underestimate the amount of money you should spend on your air quality. So these are the top of the range. Um, you can get a third one, which then gives you the ability to have an air mask. So I don't use a mask, so I don't have the third one. So it gives you a pressure in, and then this one controls just how much pressure I've got going to my line. And then remember all the time with your lines, just to make sure that you've got um, fittings that have got good size holes in them, because if you're running you know, cheap fittings that have got a small hole, it's going to reduce the, the actual quantity of air, not so much the pressure of air that gets to the spray gun, and that makes a big difference. Righto, so the gearbox, I showed you before when we were cleaning that, so it's been waiting for me to get the gun out, so it's set up now, masked up, obviously masked up all the back here, same deal, I've got to get paint around that edge, but not necessarily on the face, because I like things to, to match up without having too much paint build on it. So I've got the pan off it, because I'm going to get that um, treated rather than paint, um, so it'll go up, probably get the same colour as the exhaust, and then I've masked it all up and of course now it's decided to have a little leak out of it. It's got no oil in it but always seems to find a bit of oil. So I'll fix that, sort that out and then I'm going to prep sole again and then we'll do the methyl water on the whole lot and then we can get the epoxy out and get some on. So I like to set it up like this so this, this way I can actually paint it and turn it the same time and make sure I get in everywhere. So I've just got to stop my little oil leak there now and I'll be good so I can just, as I'm painting that, that makes it a lot easier to get all the different sides and bits and pieces. So I'll get some epoxy on it 
make a decision about just exactly how it's going to look, whether I need to grind it uh, anywhere. Obviously all of this top surface is facing the floor so no one's going to see it so you've got to think about how much you need to do and whether you're just trying to do it to make it look pretty for photos or not. Righto, so behind the scenes we've been doing a bit of work that didn't get on the camera because I'm doing all the filming and it's a bit hard to catch up with everything but these bits here are obviously off the gearbox so these are the factory mounts that go on the underside. I probably should have some gloves on doing this but so these are the original parts so we've linished those up as you can see and taken all the burrs and loose ends off them and then these are now going to be done in the PPG Vibrance Epoxy. So each one of those has been linished up, cleaned up, sandblasted inside to make sure that um, it's all nice and clean. And now the process is going to be to clean those with um, a second time now with Prepsol and then methyl and water. And then this one's obviously the, the adapter plate. So the main focus I've got is on this outside and, and just that return edge. Very little of that seen, but I need to make sure I've got coverage. And they're little brackets, bits and pieces that we're um, making. This one's for the, um, oh yeah, the thing in the boot, whatever you call it. I'll remember that in a minute. So the, the carbon canister. And then these here, these are the factory. I reckon they're Commodore actually. So I've had them on the linisher, linished all of the, um, the markings off them and made them look like they're something special when they're just another Commodore part. So they'll now get a coat of epoxy and all of this stuff's going to be some form of silver, which I haven't made up my mind exactly which silver, but before I do anything I need to get some epoxy on them and some primer on them and move forward. And then moving back over this way, um, the rack, so it's a Commodore rack. So once again we've just cleaned that up, taken all the rough edges off it, and that'll get primed up now and I'll have a look at it and see if I need to do any more. So we only need to paint this little bit here. Um, the boot goes over that, so I just need to get some, some primer on there. And then the spacer plate, the sandwich plate that goes between the adapter and the block. Once again, you see very little of it. So that being steel, that's been um, scotch brided and then deoxidined. And now we'll put the epoxy on it, get some primer and some paint on it. So, kicking goals. Right, righto, so just get my gloves on, so prep sole. Methylated spirits and water. So a lot of people think, why would you buy it in a kit like that, you know, paying the dollars when you can mix methyl and water. It's been proven that if you use the one that's made to do the job, I'm a real stickler on using the same product start to finish all the way through. If I've got a problem then I can talk to PPG and say, hey, I've got a problem. And they're not saying, what have you brought into the equation? So water and methyl, Prepsol, and then you need to use some sort of specifically made lint-free rag. So these are designed for the job. Um, there's lots of different versions out there. I just found these and I like these. They work really well. And we'll go back in and start cleaning a few bits up. Prep sole, these have already had a good clean. Um, I'm just doing a final check and all virtually just showing you guys what goes on. So fairly liberal with the, the product and then Get in all those little crevices. We've obviously done a good job of cleaning them because there's not much coming off here. So the trick is to get in. If I'm doing a panel, then I'm going to use one to clean it and one to wipe it off. But all these small parts, it's really about not having oil, hand marks, all that sort of stuff. Obviously the gloves. So prep sole first, and then we swap bottles and then go to um, the methyl and water. So the reason for the difference is the methyl and water you'll find will get the oil out of your hands off better and better from the oil. So one's a degreaser and obviously methyl is something that actually the moisture comes out and it's just what they recommend and what I do and it seems to work really well. So just um, touching on what we went over last time, we've got a couple of panels made now. So I've got the floor done. I usually always start with the floor first, that way you can build up. So that's in there now. Uh, that'll have the carpet on there. And then we've got the sides made as well. So once we start trimming them, we usually make it, trim it, and then move on to the next section. So once this is sorted, then that is done. 
then we'll go to this part and then through to here as well. Um, and then yeah, like we said, we'll have that as the removable door. But also we've gone on to the parcel tray now. We've got the seat belts in there. Got this all mounted in, the, the speaker with the, the bracket here and the tweeter. So that's all gonna be fixed to the, the steel. Um, there's usually a lip on the back of the seat here. We've just gotten rid of that. Reason being is the where the seat belt is here. That is pretty close to the back of the seat, so we need a bit of clearance there. And also you might see down the bottom of the C pillar there, the um, those little brackets I've made up. So they're just there so that the headlining has somewhere to go to. That way the headlining can come down and then fix under that channel. And then the parcel tray has a nice hard edge to meet up with to get a nice gap. So pretty happy with that now. The back seat's sitting in nice. And yep, yeah, all nice tight fit. Should look good. Righto, so today I was gonna show you a little bit what we're doing with the bumper bar. So we did this many, many months ago where we chopped, you know, basically realigned the bumper, changed the shape of it, changed the opening for the, the number plate. And I've had it blasted and then a coating of the old PPG CF epoxy. And today what I want to show you is just, I guess file finishing, but it's not really. So it's like using a file to find the highs and lows. I'm going to build it with a fairly reasonable size hammer and just get myself to a point where I'm not putting too much filler in it. So the main tools I'm going to use, the file, it's just a single cut file, just a normal file. If you're buying files, spend the extra money and get good quality ones. They last way longer and you'll get far better effort while you're doing it. A little bit of um, engineer's chalk. If you buy a box of this, it'll last you a lifetime. Um, I came about because my dad was a plumber and a um, tank maker, so it works really good on this black. So that's a shot filled leather bag, so it's a panel beater's tool effectively, so it's like a block, but it lets the metal go in, so I'm going to use that, and a hammer. So I'll get set up and get started. Okay, so I don't know what's going to show this the best either, the, my, the old Tassie oak or the, the ruler, but you can see here, this is going to be painted, so I'm going to bog it up. So there's probably about three mil of bog there, which I'd prefer, you know, to have less than that, like a mil or so. And then, as you can see here, we've got a high. So I'll show you on the back. The reason for that is the actual factory opening came all the way out to here, and we've made the plates to go in here and boxed it in rather than have it the opening. So. Um, the back's a little bit messy. Obviously, there's a bit of rust, rust and stuff there from um, being as old as it is. And then we've sectioned it out through here as well and out through the side so that it fits the body better and moved it in. And that's obviously put some curvature in it. And then here on an, it being an XC, it's actually got the slot there for the bumper that's been welded up. So you can see the bolts, that's factory, the way they're welded on, on an XC. And they're just taped up from when it went to the blaster so they don't wreck the threads with the sand with the garnet. So the trick now is we just get the old file. And straight away, it's going to give me my highs. So you can see here, obviously there, there, and there. And then the thing to determine is whether you've got to go up or down. So at the moment, that line there I need to take down and then this one down as well and then probably up a bit in the middle. So I'll get my muffs on and pick up the hammer. So I'm just going to support that in the, in the, on the underside and then hit down on that line. Now without having the bag, it's just going to bounce. So this way it sort of lets it go down. So straight away you can see I've halved how much of that. So we'll go out through here. I'm hitting it fairly hard. Now that's now pretty good. Just a bit here.
if we run, I've got a smaller file here. And see now, we're picking up all the way through here. So that's pretty good. A little bit low there. Sounds like someone wants to talk to me on the phone. Uh, a little bit high there by the feel of it. So we're just high there. So I don't, if I've got a high, it means I've got to build this edge up to get it flat. So I need this down so that I'm using this edge and this edge. So when I fill it, it won't have too much in it. So that's pretty good from here to there. I don't know how that's showing up on the camera, but, and now this is low all through here. So what I'm going to do is grab that chalk, which I dropped on the ground, put my hand underneath and mark the centre of it and the ends. Then if I flip that over, I've now got those two lines and the centre of it. And I've got a bolt in the way here. So I'm going to put that bag up underneath there. See, I might get a um, bit wider hammer. This is a sand filled hammer. So you may or may not have seen that. So it's got shot of some sort in it. A dead blow four pound hammer. Nice flat face on it. So I'm gonna stick that under there. So when that hits, it doesn't bounce because of the shot. Okay, so that didn't have a lot of effect at all. So really, out here is my main problem. Let's use a different code that time. A square with a circle. And now we'll go to the bigger one. So this is pretty thick. And a lot of people might think, I don't even know why he's doing it because it's only going to save a little bit of bog, but I'm looking for longevity. So that's a whole lot better. So really just here now, I want to get a bit more there. That's why you got to be in the gym all the time. And you see they were starting to pick up some, some lines there now, which is what we're after. So it's pretty good through there and there and there. So now, once a bit on the back of that, I can actually feel that, probably where that bolt is, I nearly bet. Right. So that's it here on this edge. So having that shot, see how that's curved to the shape? Because you might look at it and think, you know, big hammer, just going to leave a lot of dents. But because that's sitting up from underneath, it's going into the shape of the bumper.
So we've gone from having a tiny little bit showing with the file where now I've got all those bits starting to stick up. So it's getting close. And for the sake of the camera, I'm probably going to pull up there because I think that's shown really what we're trying to do. So now I need to push that up a bit, push this up a bit, and then make a decision there. So it looks like that wants to go down. So I'll give that a rattle, see what happens. go that's that's taken that rock and roll out of the top but it's still got it on the bottom so in fact that whole but oh it's not bad there so I'm going to get a block of wood now put on there and just push that ridge down okay so there's our marker there and right through there there you go that's where the hole was welded up so where that's been welded up for the bumper um, bumper jack is what's pulled pulled the metal so we'll just um, sometimes I put it on the floor on a block of wood as well but lot better. One more. I can live with that because the bumper's got to go that way. So when I put a skim on there, that'll be all right. So now I want to go down there. So you can understand why it would cost so much if you wanted to chrome plate this. You'd have to get it almost perfect so that they can then grind it, copper plate it, start shaping it to polish it. Nice flat area here, so we've cut that in, that groove, because that normally goes down flat, flat like that. And then we've welded a piece of solid round in behind there, so this could be all over the shop. So not too bad, I've went up, we've got, you know, some steel all along. So we'll just have a look and see what we've got. So that bit of steel is probably a bit high and same there. So we'll just knock them down a bit. So always with the bag underneath, otherwise you're just gonna concave the whole thing. because it's not grabbing on the fire. So it's quite low on the end there. It's like it's got a quite a deep curve there. Not so deep on that side. So you can see there where we've welded that around and up there. So when this has gone in, it's probably pulled a bit. So I'll get a little dolly or a drift. So you've seen these a few times before. So this is just a bit of flat bar, curved ends and flat, curved the other way and flat, and then a flat flat. So I'm gonna just um, put that up against that corner there.
I just had a funny thought then. My dad used to always say to me, the reason the hammer's got a handle is so that you use it. So I had hold of the hammer like that, which means you've got no leverage. If you hammer from here, it'll be about five times as hard as if you hammer them from here. So if you want to hammer something lightly, hang on down here. If you want to belt it, use the whole thing. So you can see there, or I can see, a couple of little dents where that's come up, which is now way better. But this here all looks like it wants to go down a bit. So I'm just going to... Oh, that made a difference. Look at that. So that's all within a mill there. Just a little bit high there on that one. Just there. It's funny, I went and bought a couple of new files yesterday, the day before, and like this is a Wiltshire from made in, oh, made in Australia. Normally they say England, but made in Australia. So I went and bought a couple of Nicholson's, which I've always found a really good file as a brand. And I see on the label now, it's obviously owned by Crescent Spanners. Um, must have bought them out and of course they're made in China now so I haven't tried them yet but it's getting harder and harder to find a, a tool that's made in the country it comes from originally so quite pronounced there and low there so let's find out whether that's the right height it's probably just a little bit high there and guess what? I can tell you why it's high. That's that. So anyone that's ever owned an XC Falcon, if you ever use the bumper jack, it normally put dents in the bumper where the bolts are. And if you ever hit something with your bumper, those there pushed out. So I'm going to give that a knock down. And put my bag right next to it. So that was the short handle hard swing rather than the long handled soft swing. So that's fixed that now. So the trick there is to remember when you're doing your bumper up, don't over tighten it because when you do, it's going to pull that and then put a low in it. Or if the bracket's not quite straight and it's not perfectly aligned, it's going to twist it and either wreck a really good chrome bumper or crack your paint if it's a painter bumper. So that's not bad. I'll probably mess around with that for another half an hour or more. And, um, oh, I'm not yelling now. So all that's about trying to minimise the amount of bog we're going to have because they're a painted bumper. No Boss XC, the summer nets. Utes always entered to get me in and out and mess about. So fully restored, FPV, but you've got to look after them. So this thing's uh, an 06 and not looking far off brand new still, but it's all about maintenance. So you can see there, with my old mate, the mother's polish. It gets watermarked, it's all raw aluminium, but um, it makes a difference when it's popping like it is now. So it's spent a couple of hours on that and it's looking absolutely wonderful. Right, so I'll keep talking about the clover. So this is a little fella here and it's almost down, it's quite light green now. So I sprayed it, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and we've had so much rain, it's almost like, you know, did you get it properly? But what it's done is it's probably only about 20% of what it was. This whole area was just in that clover. So once we, the wind drops a bit and the rain goes away, we've got another spray and it might knock it on the head, I hope. Righto, so I'm in the bar, or what was the bar, because I'm turning into the set for Astral Design Extra, so you'll see that happen in the next few weeks. So I've been out here watching the V8s and 
changing things around. So have a look on Marketplace on my Howard Astle Facebook page because I'm selling off some stuff, way too much gear in the room. So that's the go. Stay tuned, you'll see all about it in the next couple of weeks. All right, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, right.